Surgery is no joke, no matter the type. Recovery demands extensive time, effort, and of course, plenty of discomfort. Yet within the realm of orthopedic surgeries, there are some procedures that have a reputation for more extensive recoveries. In this video, we'll be covering four orthopedic surgeries known for their challenging rehabilitation journeys, discussing the nuances of each, and exploring why they present unique challenges for patients. Let's kick this video off with the first challenging surgical recovery, reverse total shoulder replacement. This orthopedic surgery is pretty cool in that it completely challenges the orientation of the shoulder. The surgeon literally flips the anatomy, where the ball of the humerus that once fit into the socket of the shoulder blade is now reversed. It's an impressive feat of medicine that is indicated typically in those with massive rotator cuff tears, where the rotator cuff tendons are severely torn and cannot be repaired. So instead of relying on the rotator cuff muscles, the surgery repositions the joint's mechanics so that the deltoid muscle can take over and act as the primary move of the shoulder, which is amazing that this is possible. But now you have to retrain these muscles to do a job they are not naturally designed for, which requires skillful rehab. And as with all total joint replacements, this procedure does not come without significant trauma during the surgery. The surgeon must cut through several layers of muscles and ligaments, not to mention needing to replace the joint. So you have a combination of soft tissue and bony healing to consider. This extensive repair results in significant pain and swelling that can be challenging to manage early in the post-operative period. Patients must also follow strict precautions during the initial stages of recovery to prevent complications such as soft tissue irritation and joint dislocation. And despite all the protection and rehabilitation efforts, full restoration of shoulder function is not expected due to the nature of the repair. Next on our list is meniscus repairs. Now this isn't the arthroscopic procedure where they go in and just clip out a piece of the meniscus. That's a meniscectomy. A meniscus repair is when they go in and sew up the torn meniscus. So because the meniscus is stitched together, there is a lengthy protection phase needed to ensure it heals. And because it's the meniscus we're dealing with, which acts as a shock absorber and takes up a lot of forces when we're moving around, there is about a four to six weeks of crutch use with the knee locked in a brace to keep it straight. There is also knee range of motion limitations, usually for the first six weeks, where the goal is to gradually restore knee flexibility. So because the leg has restrictions on it for a prolonged time, this leads to stiffness and deconditioning of the leg muscles, which can be tough to get back. And once more advanced strength exercises are introduced, a slower progression is expected with activities such as squatting and lunging due to the inherent strain they place on the meniscus. So modification to load and range of motion for these activities is needed, which slows down progress. This inevitably pushes back the return of sport phase of rehab a bit, as it takes some time to catch up from a physical standpoint and slowly start reintroducing higher level of activities such as jumping and running. And this is not to mention the fact that many meniscus repairs are typically a combined injury, meaning the person usually has an ACL and possibly even an MCL tear on top of it, which adds to the tissue trauma, requiring more an extensive repair and consideration for healing and rehab modifications. And let's not forget about the psychological trauma that comes with injury, especially sports-related knee injuries, which can be as much of a barrier for athletes returning to sport. This makes a well-structured rehab program essential to minimize muscle atrophy, restore mobility, regain muscle control, and improve confidence, all while monitoring for excessive tissue irritation along the way. And with all of these surgeries, regaining muscular control can be one of the most challenging aspects of rehab, but the faster we address this, the better the outcomes. Luckily, there is an affordable and easy-to-use device that can boost muscle recovery in the earlier phases of rehab. A neuromuscular electrical stimulation device uses electrical currents applied through adhesive electrodes to target specific muscles. These currents enhance muscle contractions, and when combined with other rehab strategies like manual therapy and exercise, electrical stimulation can help speed up recovery and improve post-surgical outcomes. I have provided a link to a neuromuscular electrical stimulation device in the description if you wanted to check this out. Moving on now to our next surgical procedure, Achilles Tendon Repair. The Achilles is a massive tendon that connects the calf muscle to your foot and is responsible for propelling your body forward when walking, jumping, or running. The calf is a powerful muscle, so the tendon must tolerate some serious forces daily. This muscle is commonly torn after experiencing a sudden, high-level load and has been reported to feel like someone kicked you in the back of the leg. 
Achilles tendon rehab is challenging due to the extensive protection phase required after surgery. This phase aims to minimize excessive strain through the freshly repaired tendon to promote healing. This requires mobilization in a boot for about 8 weeks after surgery. This results in muscle and joint pain simply due to immobility and significant deconditioning of the surrounding muscles. It will also lead to some serious muscle and joint stiffness, which therapists attempt to prevent with passive manual therapy techniques. And once the boot comes off, it can be quite a surprise for patients, as it looks like a baby leg compared to the other side. It's the unfortunate cost of protecting the repair at the expense of muscle conditioning. And because the calf muscle has been out of commission for so long, it can take a very long time to regain its size and retrain it. This makes walking very challenging when patients first come out of the boot, as they are less confident to place weight through the front of the foot, requiring extensive gait and movement training to fix. And as the tendon heals and strength exercises are introduced, it's key for the therapist to specifically dose the difficulty level to ensure that the tendon isn't overstressed while still promoting strength gains. So it's a bit of a Goldilocks scenario, finding the just right intensity to optimize recovery without risking further injury. If you're getting value out of this video, make sure to take a second and give it a like. We put a lot of time and effort into researching and developing this guide to help you through your rehab journey. And your support will help this video spread to inform more people like you who have rehab related questions. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date on all of your rehab related needs. Now let's get back to the video. The next surgery on the list is another challenging tendon repair, rotator cuff surgery. Like Achilles tendon repair, rotator cuff repairs require a prolonged protection phase, often involving six weeks in a sling. This time unavoidably leads to shoulder stiffness and muscle deconditioning. However, what sets rotator cuff repairs apart from other tendon repairs is the complexity of the shoulder joint compared to other joints in the body. The rotator cuff plays a significant role in shoulder function, and given the joint's inherent instability, it's crucial for these muscles to function at a high level to ensure control of the joint and minimize strain. And I think this is where rotator cuff recoveries differ from other tendon repairs. You're not just rebuilding the strength of the rotator cuff. You're also tasked with restoring its crucial stability function in one of the body's most unstable joints. And unless rehab is sufficiently structured to address the stability component, patients have a tough time regaining a higher level of function of the shoulder. Adding to the complexity of rotator cuff rehab is the fact that the trajectory of tendon healing also hinges on a couple of non-modifiable risk factors that are out of the control of the therapist or surgeon. These include the overall health, age, and quality of the tissue available for repair. Unsurprisingly, the more compromised the health, the more advanced the age, and the more chronic the tear, the greater the risk of re-tearing despite surgical and rehab efforts. Now this is true for all tendon repairs, but rotator cuff repairs tend to have a higher re-tear rate compared to some of the other ones. This is due to the complex anatomy and function of the shoulder. As mentioned, the shoulder joint is inherently unstable due to its wide range of motion, which places significant demands on the rotator cuff muscles. Additionally, the blood supply to the rotator cuff tendons is relatively poor, which can hinder the healing process and increase the risk of re-tears. Patient compliance is not just important, it's absolutely crucial, especially for surgeries with more challenging recoveries. Adhering to rehabilitation advice and exercise regimens significantly influences surgical success. If you've gone through any of these surgeries, feel free to provide your experiences below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Well, there you have it, four orthopedic surgeries with the toughest recoveries. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And stay tuned for the next episode of Physio Show, where we will continue to provide you with more information about your body, how it works, and what it needs to keep moving.